Mr. Neil Turner is requesting this uh, administrative appeal to the decision of the zoning administrator to revoke a zoning permit at the Turner's Marine property, Mr. Tom Taylor. I believe that'll be you again. It would be. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for hearing me. Uh, it is my pleasure today to be here on behalf of Neil Turner and Turner's Marina. Neil, would you stand up, please? This is Neil Turner, who owns Turner's Marina. Turner's Marina operates the Hilton Head Harbor. I'm sorry, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Turner's Marina is the operating entity of the Hilton Head Harbor Marina, which is located on the north end of Hilton Head and is in combination with the RV Resort campground that is located just adjacent to it. The RV Resort and the marina were originally developed in 1981, and then the portion of the campground was conveyed over to the Property Owners Association, or in that instance, actually, it's a condominiumized association. And the marina, which is approximately two acres with docks, was conveyed to uh, an original successor to the declarant named Billy Bobs, and in 2017, Turner's Marina bought the marina. Um, the key aspect that we are here about today is a request that was granted to Mr. Turner to allow him to install gates upon the entrance to Turner's Marina or Hilton Head Harbor in order to secure the marina a little bit better. We've had a lot of problems over the last two years with theft, and uh, he has had the uh, unfortunate that incident of having to first hire security guards and now we believe that a gate would be the best thing to have there. This is at the access point at the end of Jenkins Road if any of y'all are familiar with it and you do have uh, a copy of the photograph in there. Um, Miss Austin originally granted the uh, petition for a gate on May the 21st and then on June 29th revoked that uh, zoning permit for the installation of the gates. Um, for y'all's purpose I think the most important important thing to understand is that there is no dispute between anybody, the, the administration nor us, that this is private property, that Turner's Marina owns this property, and that the RV resort owners have a valid and platted easement, not platted, but a valid and recorded easement over it. And Mr. Turner has been very clear every time he's dealt with Miss Austin, and there are written records that are in front of you all that have indicated that everyone who has the right to use that easement will be given access through the gate, either via a push button transmitter or a gate key code, something like that. There is not a single individual who has legal access to come through it who will not be allowed passage through the gate. This includes a lessee of the uh, association which operates a restaurant and, and the gate uh, or excuse me behind where the gate would be so in essence all we have that's going to be different is a gate that will be there to secure the property uh, at times when it needs to be secured and other times anybody will be able to come through it now our argument is basically fairly simple because I've worked with Miss Austin forever and I know that she's very good at what she does she has originally approved the gate looking at the standards that she should have, which were, are all the applicable standards in the CDC uh, met, they were, are the conditions of permits or development approvals approved under this development code, they were, are all required permits for access, potable water and sewer, uh, granted they were, including the fire department's access because there was a master fire key given, and all other applicable standards of the code of ordinances were met. That's why the permit was originally issued on May 21st. What apparently occurred afterwards, according to the documentation that we've received, is that there were some complaints by lot owners within the RV resort who said they simply didn't want the gate. And Ms. Austin, acting on those complaints for some reason, pull the permit, um, notwithstanding the fact that nobody has had any problem with getting access and everybody has been promised access. We are of the opinion that someone should not be able by their influence simply to be the last person call in a county uh, employee and insisting upon something that they don't like when it is legal and appropriate to have it there. And so we are here today asking this Zoning Board of Appeals to review this administrative decision to overturn it because there is absolutely no reason why the permit should have been pulled. Uh, I believe Ms. Austin will tell you because she testified in court last week in a related case that she forgot that the RV resort did not have a secondary entrance and that all of the RV lot owners would have to come through this entrance. I don't doubt 
her when she tells me that because she has a lot of things going on. But that does not explain why you should pull the permit when everybody was going to have legal access to it. And again, I, I tell you, and I don't think Ms. Austin will tell you differently, Mr. Turner has worked in good faith as hard as he can to get everything that the county desired about this, including access to each individual who has a legal right to be there. And we ask the board to uh, consider what Ms. Austin has to say about why the decision was made and then reverse it because this is that appeal board that can do that when a county person decides for whatever reason, personal or otherwise, that they've decided they want to make a change. It's just not right. The standards were met, the permit should be granted, and Mr. Turner should be able to erect the case. Thank you. Before you sit. Yes, sir. Uh, is, do anyone have any questions for Mr. Tom Pillar? Before sir, you sit. I have one. Okay. Well, uh, what about access to that restaurant? Mr. Chimzak, um, Mr. Turner also assured uh, Ms. Austin that a gate code would be given to the restaurant owners and they could give it to any of the people who want to come in if they want to have either act, you know, access for it uh, posted and they have the code up there. Um, we realize, as anybody that's smart enough, behind the gate where there's access codes, yeah, they'll get out. But the purpose of the gate is to hopefully fend off some of the people late at night who may not want it or who may not know it. Um, but we will do anything that is necessary in order to provide the code so that the uh, restaurant people can get the access that they need. And Mr. Turner has been very clear about that. Uh, one more question, yes, sir. Would cameras satisfy the requirement to theft prevention if you just strictly put cameras up instead of gates so you could record who's coming in and out of that uh, marina Mr. Chimps, I, I think that's a great question, and it's one that I would have to defer to to Mr. Turner, and I'd hate to put him on the spot right now to say it, but obviously it's something that he could think about, and um, if depending on what this board decides and whether or not we appeal to the circuit court, um, we would understand that. But Mr. Turner really sees this as a private property right, and uh, again, no one else owns any of this property. This is private property with an easement over it that nobody questions is being honored. There's not one person who says they're not having access. It, what it really boils down to is it that inconvenient for someone to stop and put in a gate code to enter someone else's private property. And I understand that's not always what people want to do, but the law in South Carolina, and I believe I provided you citation to it, certainly is that you do have that legal right. Yeah, um, obviously there's not going to be a human at that uh, gate there. It's not, it's one of those keypad gate. Um, how would it work if, if I were to, you know, just arbitrarily decide that oh, tonight, let's go out to dinner. How would I access that through that gate to get to that restaurant, to access that restaurant? How would that work? Mr. Mack, if you came uh, in during the regular business hours, there will actually be a person on the other end of the buzzer. If someone just pushed the, the gate code, almost like an apartment in New York, uh, there is someone at Turner's Marina during the regular business hours of the day. Um, after that, um, Mr. Turner basically has said that if it means getting the gates and if this board wanted it, he would be willing to simply, when there were not employees there to answer the buzz, he would be willing to raise the gates, even though that somewhat defeats the purpose late at night. Uh, still, the fact that there are gates there uh, hopefully will serve some deterrent purpose during the day. But if this board, which it has the authority to do, voted to authorize it and said that the gates must be raised when it, there is not a person available at a buzzer in order to access it, he'd be willing to do that. Uh, and did you say early in your in your presentation that that the gate is to protect the marina? I guess where the ramp is the the boat. Yes, sir. The marina. There are a number of private boat slips there, and we've right. had a lot of theft from the boats after after dark at night. It's just kind of a prevalent thing, it seems like these days. Okay. And of course, uh -huh. the RV resort would benefit, we believe, from the security also. But it's not being paid for by Mr. Turner to to help the RV resort. But it certainly would be a unintended beneficiary, I believe. Would, would y'all be okay with um, certain hours having the gates open for the restaurant purposes, like from certain hours of the night where their customers can come in after there's not an attendant? This comes up. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, say, say they, they quit taking diners at 9.30, then you can close the gates after that. You know, that's what I would 
think would be reasonable if the buying the restaurant. I agree, Mr. Mitchell. I think that'd be a reasonable uh, provision that y'all could put in anything that you uh, voted on. Well, I have another question, but I'll hold it until after we hear from the county. Any more questions for Mr. Taylor? Thank you, Mr. Thank Taylor. Thank you, Gus. Glad to hear from the county. <clears throat> Well, Chairman Matt, Ben Coppedge for the county. Uh, not to go too much into uh, the actual reasons or the basis for the, the, the approval or the disapproval or whether or not there should be gates on this property. Uh, as we sit with this appeal, it's more of a procedural issue. Um, back when this started, uh, Mr. Turner met with Miss Austin, uh, provided her with the county tax map, pretty zoomed in. So you couldn't really tell a whole lot about those properties. Um, how they're situated, I know you have your map, you have uh, Jenkins Road going up there to, uh, I guess it's the east of those properties. And Mr. Turner's property is there in the middle and, and the uh, properties owned by the other property owner, it's just one property owner are on either side. So there's the restaurant property and the RV park property and they're owned by the same one Mr. Turner has an easement over those property, or they have an easement over Mr. Turner's properties. During the meetings with Mr. Turner, uh, it was Ms. Alston's understanding that there were other accesses to both the restaurant and to the RV park property. So as presented to her, it was her understanding that the placement of the gates and as you can see, she changed where the gates could be. She marked out mm -hmm. showing that the gates couldn't prevent access from the RV park over to the restaurant. So she was just trying to make sure that the gates just kept uh, people from coming on that middle part. That was Mr. Turner's property. So that permit was issued with that being uh, Ms. Austin's understanding. And section 7.4.30B of the Community Development Code uh, does say that the applicant bears the burden of ensuring that an application contains sufficient information to demonstrate compliance with ap applicable standards. So based on that, based on Ms. Austin believing that she had all that she needed in front of her, and that, of course, the RV park and the restaurant were going to have full access, and that the gates, as she approved them, weren't going to impede access in any way, she issued the permit. And I think the wording of the permit underlines that. Uh, it says, under no circumstances will they be placed in a manner that prevents the owners of parcel 306 access to their property. So she's saying, not that there's just some limited access or they might have a gay code or something like that. She's saying under no circumstances are these to prevent any kind of access to the property. And any violation of that is going to cause them to be rescinded. Uh, she later was contacted by uh, Mr. Patterson who represents the other owners out there and was made aware of the fact that there weren't other accesses to the restaurant and to the RV park. And uh, after speaking to him and, and reviewing some evidence on that, found that there actually were no other accesses. She determined that there had been some, if not a misrepresentation, at, at least a not full telling of the story. And that because of that, her permit had been issued in error. Uh, since the permit had been issued in error, she sent Mr. Turner a letter uh, revoking the permit. And she does have the ability to do that. Uh, I believe it's section 9.5.20B of the Community Development Code allows the county to correct, stop, abate, or enjoin a violation of the CDC by permit revocation and allows for permit revocation when the permit was produced by false representations or was issued in error, which is what we've got going on here. Um, I 
I, I'd be happy, uh, and I'm sure Ms. Alston would be happy to answer any questions the board would have or, or just further confirm anything or correct anything I might have missed if the board would like to hear from her. Do anyone on the board have any questions for Ms. Hillary? Mm-hmm. For the county um, in a home? Between the permit grant and the permit was granted until when it was rescinded and so we've got long the process where they went. permit was granted we got may 21st and then it was rescinded on june 28th okay, i just want to make sure I was. all right and I, I think because there was it was miss Austin's understanding that there was going to be no effect on these surrounding properties there wasn't any notice there was no posting uh on the properties out there so i believe that's when these property owners became aware of it. Any questions for the county? Were the gates installed? No. Okay. No more questions. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Taylor. And Mr. Mack, I have a question for the board, please. Um, I am shocked that there has been an accusation that Mr. Turner misrepresented anything. And I'd like to ask Ms. Austin to come forward and allow me to question her because I have now heard three different stories as to why this occurred. There is a letter dated June 29th that says uh, that she, she took this action because it has been made clear to me that the gates would in fact block access to the adjacent RV park and property. She testified under oath 10 days ago that she simply forgot about that, that she didn't know about it. But I have never until until I've never until this evening heard that there was an accusation that Mr. Turner made a misrepresentation to her that's on public feed. And I request that Ms. Austin be sworn in so that I can ask her exactly what the misrepresentation was that allegedly was made. No, we're not going to be swearing her in, but I mean, it. I don't think that would be the route to take, the, the best route. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't want to bring her up to be sworn in may I if ask, I even have that power to do such. I understand, sir. Uh, may I ask my client one question, and that is, did he make any misrepresentations to Ms. Austin in order to secure this permit? Because I'd like for it to be on the record. You can ask your client, yes. Mr. Turner, will you come up? Neil, can you state your name for the board? Good evening. My name is Neil Turner. You own Turner's Marina? I do. Neil, when you made application to Ms. Austin and she asked you questions about these gates, did you make any type of misrepresentation to her at all? No, and it was never my intention to even try. That's all I have for Mr. Turner. Thank you. Jeffrey Standard. Right there. They may have questions for us. Tom Taylor, is there any other access to this uh, RV? Mr. Mack, it's such an interesting question. The literal answer is no, but they do have access to Jenkins Road, which we have begged them to open up but which the RV Association has not yet done. So we're hopeful in the future that they do that. Uh, As you come down Jenkins Road, they have what's basically a a maintenance area right there, and it would take 50 feet of paving to connect that, and they'd have their own entrance right there, but there's not right now, sir. Okay, so earlier, I think you said that uh, the main purpose for the gate is to protect the marina. Yes, sir. So, what would be the hardship to if you were to just back your gate up? That way you could have still have access to the restaurant, access to the RV, and you can still protect those who are directly straight ahead to or the marina. What would be the hardship to your client if we were to take that route or if you guys were to take that route? Actually, Mr. Mack, if you look at the um, uh, photograph, um, the marina, when you talk about it, is in, is in various different parts. When you come through the main gate, you're on the, the main gate that I wish was a gate. When you come in the main entrance, mm-hmm. you're on the marina property. 
in front of you would be the private slips. To the right would be the main commercial area, and then there are uh, a there is a uh, lessee uh, known as Sea Monkeys Water Sports Rentals to the right. So you couldn't gate all of that off by a secondary gate. Um, just it's not physically possible to do that. The only way to control it is at the beginning of the entrance off of Jenkins Island Road. So where is Sea Monkey again? I'm assuming we, we're talking about the entrance where this flag is in the middle here. Uh, can you hold up what you're looking at? Uh -huh. I We've got also it. got this that's not very clear either. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, we got a see the one we exhibit two. Right. If you don't mind, I'll go to this one. You can see the gate at the gate would be right here at the on the right hand side for Jenkins Island Road. And then you come in to the uh, what's shaded in yellow, which is all Turner's Marina property. Then if you took a hard right and went down that way, that's where the Sea Monkeys water sports operates from and there are lease uh, areas down there to then lease slips for the uh, sports uh, and the jet skis. And then the main commercial pier is down there to the right and then you'll see private slips are right there directly in front of you. So it would not be possible to gate off each of those areas. The only real way to do it is to have a main gate right there, um, which basically what I currently is sort of coming on the property itself. But it seems like that you could have a gate going onto the docks for the boat slips that would protect I believe those. there is actually one there. Yes, ma'am. Which is not, of course, as you know, Ms. Frederick, uncommon on walk right. down marinas like this. There is one there on the walkway. Mr. Taylor, yes, sir. is then there a boat ramp there, a launch? Yes, sir. Is that county owned or no, is it private? That's uh, Mr. It's on Mr. Turner's property. Okay. All right. Are there any more questions for Mr. Tom Taylor? And I just wanted to be clear. So the access way, is it here? Yes, sir. To act, okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Uh, I believe we have public comment for... No. No public comment. Mr. Chairman, I had asked my name, Russell Patterson. Mr. Mac, I, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Mr. Mac, I object to this. And this we had asked an administrator. The, um, yeah. Just calm down for a moment. There will be no public comment for this this item here. Okay. Now, Mr. Chairman, I'll only say we never got noticed that Mr. Kirby was trying to put a gate up. Mr. Chairman, we never excuse me, sir. There's no public comment. Okay. Um, Okay. We, 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 we have your uh, information that you submitted. So there's no public comment for this. And uh, we, we, we have what you sent before this board. I, I understand that, but we didn't yeah. know there's 200 lot on this. Mr. Chairman. Again. Excuse Mr. me, sir. Chairman, please. Could you please have a seat? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, just on that, you know, we're just saying it has been customary to allow the aggrieved party who's got an interest in proceeding and represented by counsel to have counsel Mr. Chairman, there is nothing within the rules of procedure that allow that, and I have not seen that before in my visits here, and I think y'all heard Mr. Crow, who has more expertise than every lawyer I know put together, talk about this at, an at another thing, about how this is an administrative record appeal, and that's what it's supposed to be. And I think at the end of the day, it's uh, still at the discretion. But let me, uh, what do you think? Mm -hmm. We don't have any public comment. Yes. Right. So understanding that uh, on an appeal, there is no public comment. However, we do have 
uh, Mr. Patterson, Russell Patterson's uh, information that he submitted before the board, and I believe everyone had that opportunity to review that. And I don't know if you have anything else to say outside of what he said, but I think that was uh, enough information that this board can, you know, move forward on. Because, you know, I don't want to stop precedence, uh, setting the precedent of having someone speak when there is, when it's an appeal. And uh, it is just not, if I do it for one, then I have to do it for all. So, with that being said, board members. Um, I, I'd like to make a point that on the actual zoning permit, item number um, two, mm -hmm. under no circumstances, and these are the conditions of permit approval, under no circumstances, gate shall be placed in a manner that prevents the owners of parcel 306 access to their property. And I think what... The, what we've heard and what Hillary had decided is that that does prevent access by having gates there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if they can open the gate, though, doesn't that give them access? Well, I think there's a, a different uh, challenge when there's a restaurant there. That that's. I think that's a I mean, I think that pre pre prevents some people. Well, they agreed to have it open during the restaurant hours. Would that? I think that would make a difference, yeah. Yeah. Ms. Rager, I didn't understand that last thing that you said. Two, two minutes I two, said yeah. you had agreed to yes, have it open yes, during the restaurant hours. Yes, ma'am. I just didn't understand what Mr. I said uh, that would make a difference. Oh, thank you. I just didn't hear that. I'm sorry to have a ringing. <laughs> Um, any other board members have anything to say pertaining this uh, administrative appeal on this application? It's one of the things just concerned me about having a gate, and I understand that, you know, you can make provisions and, uh, you know, you can maybe, you know, say you'll have the gate open, but it just, it just, I'm just having a hard time digesting the fact that, you know, if this restaurant, if someone went to visit this restaurant or even visit someone at the RV place, it's, it's just kind of, uh, it just doesn't sit well with me. I can understand protecting the rest of your property, but up front, I'm not sure if there, I wish there was another place that this gate could be placed to secure the rear, uh, any any point beyond the restaurant and this RV place, but I guess you're telling me there's no other location that this gate could be placed outside of being right at the front. That's correct, Mr. Brown. And of course, the, the permit does provide that any violations of it will result in it being rescinded and the gates removed. Certainly, that was the out which if there was going to be a problem, allowed the county to jerk it for cause. This was done in advance based upon complaints without any proof that there was ever any denial of access. If this permit was issued as written, and then this board, uh, Ms. Austin, became aware that someone had been denied access, you'd be so wholly within your rights as would she to revoke the permit at that point in time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard the uh, testimony and uh, from both sides, and we have a lot of information sitting before us. So, you know, um, it's the pleasure if someone would like to make a motion, and then we can have a discussion and uh, move forward on this matter. Now we can have a discussion. Anybody want to second it? So when you said, so you're going to 
uphold the county's decision and, and that right. they made the uphold the county's decision, yes, sir. And that is I'll second it. So it's, it's, it's a motion on the floor to uphold the county's decision um, that they acted in a correct manner to to pull the permit and that uh, it's been made and, and, and it's been properly made in second. So all in favor of upholding and denying do the administrative. Do we want to discuss it first? Discussion. Well, yeah, we can have a discussion. So it's been it's been properly made in second. Um, Are there possibilities? Do you to make a, a point? You know, when, when I'm looking at this, is you know the actual easement into the property. Um, it's for you know to provide access um, for sufficient for motor vehicle traffic. I don't know if that's doable with gates with the type of acres that are in there, but I think that. Upholding that easement access is the utmost important, and it's everyone's rights. But I do, I also see that they need to, to be able to secure their property. But there is access easement. If I was a restaurant owner, I would not want gay kids going into my restaurant. I think there's ways around it. I'm not sure, besides what Mr. Patterson has put together, that the RV, the hours of the RV, park our or their access requirements. Um, I haven't gotten my head wrapped around that yet, but I do know that the to the restaurant and the RV park, they could change uses. So we want to make sure that no matter what the use is, that they are still can gain access if that changed. Mr. So Mitchell, is, excuse me, they couldn't change uses, sir. This is a covenanted piece of property, and it is a campground, and these the restaurant is actually on common areas uh, owned by the association. So it might change lessees at some point, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't become a Harley shop. It wouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that's where my, that's where I'm kind of, I'm and held up with just denying it. But. The other thing that it seemed like that the easement said if i'm reading it correctly is that it doesn't have to be there they just have to provide an easement so that there is opportunity that the um another easement could be it runs it's given like what mr taylor was saying for the other entrance off of jenkins drive yes one, so, one option from uh, mr patterson is that we could uh continue this appeal until a judge Duke's issues order on the gate issue. Yeah, this is in the Judge Duke's hand as well, huh? Question is, is what was going on the testimony that you were kept referencing ten days ago, Mr. Mack? Um, we is, are in the eighth day of what is known as a declaratory judgment action trial initiated by Turner's Marina for an interpretation and declaration as to what the covenants say and how they govern the land. It involves a number of different issues. It involves the easement only tangentially, and that is simply a, uh, a declaration that the easement is there. There is nothing within the declaratory judgment action about gates whatsoever, and I don't think Judge Dukes will probably his ruling will probably have anything to do with the gates um, via that way. I think the only way we would get Judge Dukes's input would be to appeal a negative result from the ZBOA, which we could, of course, do under the statutes. Mm -hmm. So he's. Mr. Chairman, I know you don't want me to say anything, but I can explain that. Sir. But I'll sit down if you don't want me to explain. Well, and, and Chairman Mack, if one way to, to do that might be if, if the board is hearing from the parties further. Uh, the county might be able to just call Mr. Patterson since he's uh, a litigant in those proceedings, and he might just be able to tell us as a witness for the county what's going on there. He's not a litigant in those proceedings, and his client is not a litigant in those proceedings that Judge Dukes has under consideration. There are three lawsuits brought by Mr. Turner, and one of those lawsuits, the gate issue, I have specifically raised, is not in the trial he's talking about. It's to be tried. Correct. I think that would sure. probably have some bearing on our decision. Mm -hmm.
Mr. Chairman, if that's the board's desire, and Mr. Mitchell, I understand that, we would prefer that the board do that rather than turn this down. Because I think that would make it cleaner if the board was of a decision to say this will be stayed until such time as the lease case is tried, then that would be preferable to turning it down and having us be forced to make a separate appeal that way. I, mean, I, I don't love the I, I, I am still deferring this. You know, it seems to me my decision would be contingent on if there's open cases to be mm -hmm. contingent. I mean, they're, they're dealing directly with how we're impacting our decision. Mm -hmm. So I'd be more comfortable deferring it until those are figured out. Or mm -hmm. you're saying you'd be more comfortable with deferring with making a decision on this until the courts. Yes, is. if there's open suits, if there's open. And that's the Sounds pleasure. Like three. Yeah. On this. And if that's the pleasure of the board to defer this until such time the, the, the courts are, Judge Dukes have uh, completed the, because uh, obviously you guys have a lot going on over there at the courts right now in this case. So uh, it might be a wise idea for this board to defer this until such time. So, uh, there's a main it's, motion. Yeah, so I guess it can be The best thing to do is just rescind the withdraw the motion and, and put a motion on the floor to General defer this. Withdraw motion, withdraw a second, vice versa. Mr. Chairman, I'll withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. Okay, so the motion has been withdrawn a second. And, um, so can we put a motion to defer? Are you okay with deferring this until? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, could I get someone to put a motion, on, make a motion to defer this until, uh, I guess, such time the courts have decided what they're going to do? Or, or it's probably best to just withdraw this. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would right. you like to? would rather me do that. We will move to withdraw think, the yeah. application, but without prejudice to bring right. it back. Right. 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 Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's All right. So that, that I, I get we, we, have that to do would a be, motion. Everybody just agrees. Yeah. So that would that would be the best route Thank to take. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's negotiate. <laughs> so it's not that bad at all. Um, Item number four, Mr. Mike 